Painter Robert Henry said, human faces are incentive to great adventure. The picture is the trace of that adventure. Trace, in this sense, means a mark, an object, or other indication of the existence or passing of something. The picture, I argue, is the trace of any adventure, and the Maxim 5 is a great companion for that adventure. Is the 5 the best thing to come out of the 1990s at all? Well, not quite, but whether you call it the 5 or the Alpha Suite 2, this is the best 90s entry to mid-level camera, period. End of story. The 5 so far outpaces the comparable cameras and, in fact, many of the better cameras from the other makers of the time that it's staggering to me that these aren't widely seen as one of the modern classics. There are some basic features in this camera that other makers lacked, like a metal mounting flange, automatic switching to high-speed sync flash with shutter speeds faster than 1 1 25th of a second, um, but that was only with three specific Minolta flashes. An amazing compactness, a lightness beyond belief, since the camera weighs in at only 335 grams, and structural strength that makes the user ask if it's possible that this could be a plastic 90s camera. Oh, and I forgot to mention, this camera is very easy to operate with just one hand. I've never used a camera with the same level of features that this has, that can also be operated almost all of the time with just the right hand. The 5 does have some weaknesses, like the semi-frequent failure in the pentamirror's silver that causes the reflective system that leads from the mirror and the shutter box up to the viewfinder to turn yellow and blue, and that greatly diminishes the viewfinder's quality. But if you find one of these with good mirrors, which is most of them, then there's no noticeable difference in brightness in the viewfinder between the 5 and cameras that have a pentaprism. I'm going to let that sink in for a moment. Most pentamirror systems are around one stop, some of them actually more, dimmer than equivalent pentaprism systems, not the 5. The other big weakness the 5 has is how long the batteries last. Depending on whether you use autofocus and flash, the batteries will last between 9 and 45 rolls. Now, the lower end of that assumes autofocus with power zoom lenses and heavy on-camera flash use. The latter end of that assumes an autofocus prime lens with zero on-camera flash uses. Switch to a manual focus lens and you can expect more than 45 rolls. Regardless, those are not good numbers. Assume 24 or 36 photos per roll. Now imagine a modern DSLR maker releasing a camera that could take between 214 and 1600 photos on a single charge. No one would buy that camera. With my five, on three different occasions, including one hike I was really excited about in Colorado Springs, the batteries died unexpectedly. In the Colorado Springs instance, I had put fresh batteries in the camera the day before. By fresh, what I mean is they had just come out of a package. I can't say how long they'd been sitting in a warehouse or store shelf before I bought them. Now, part of the problem with these cameras is that even when they're off, they drain batteries because they have an onboard quartz clock. I mean, most of them do, anyway. I can't say for certain if the camera models of the five that don't have a, a date printer do or don't have the onboard quartz clock. But assuming that they all do, that quartz clock drains batteries 24 seven as long as they're in, regardless of whether or not your camera is turned on. So this camera, it's as power hungry as a Russian oligarch. If you're a righty, the five is pretty close to perfect. You can operate all of the major functions with just your right hand using your left only to load film and switch dials on the function dial. Now that also includes the film back release, which on this camera is on the right side. And holding the 5 with one hand, it's easy. I can't think of a lighter 35mm camera, and possibly the 5's lower spec siblings in the 3 and the 4. 
but the difference between those is negligible. And for the lightweight and the Pentamira system, does the 5 feel like a flimsy, chintzy, plastic-bodied camera? Well, no. That's left for the comparable Pentax, Nikon, and Canon bodies of the same age. The 5 feels every bit as solid as the 7. If I'm honest, to me, the 5 actually feels better made than the 7 because the camera's weight is more easily managed and more appropriate for the materials that make up the camera. I can find exactly no faults with the 5's ergonomics, and, in fact, I like holding the 5 more than my beloved 9 in some ways because the 5 is light enough not to make my hands tired, even on a long hike. The 5 is an interesting camera to me, and by far it's the most interesting of the 90s cameras to me of, of its comparable class. And part of that is because the 5 came in three trim levels. Oh, yes, uh, yeah, that's not a widely known fact. And to be fair, all of these were marketed as the 5 or the Alpha Suite 2, which was the same camera with a different name. And insofar as I can tell, what I would call a trim level or the variations thereof had to do solely with the manufacture date and the destination market. It's possible that the different model trim levels were also for different retailers specifically. At one time, Minolta made, uh, for instance, the Minolta 3. They called it the GT and they sold it in Target only as the GT. So Minolta had a history of making mod model changes, minor model changes, for specific retailers. So let's take my 5, for instance. It's actually badged in Alpha Suite 2, and it's black. This specific camera, these were only available in black, under the Japanese Alpha badge, and only in Japan. And the Japanese market bodies, whether they be black or silver, were the best. Depending on which trim level of 5 you have, it may or may not have a built-in date printer and date function. All of the Alphas have that date function, but that's not why the Alphas are better. The Alphas also have a switch to select panorama or standard framing, which puts blinds into the viewfinder and in front of the film to change the aspect ratio of the image that you're capturing. The panorama mode is a 16 by 7 ratio, which is wider in the standard 16 by 9 for widescreen televisions. And that means that a panorama photo from the, from the Alpha Suite 2 would letterbox on your computer monitor or TV. But that's not what makes the Alpha better. And again, if I'm honest, I think that the panorama mode on 35 millimeter cameras was a huge gimmick and silly because all it did was eliminate useful space on the film and because the panorama pictures were blown up larger than a standard film photo, larger than a standard 5x7 film print, that is, it actually reduced image resolution on the panoramic images compared to a standard non-panoramic image. But check this out. This is why the Minolta Alpha Suite 2 is better than the Maxim or Dynax 5 versions. The Alpha Suite 2 has a flip-up plastic light leak cover for the mirror where the Maxim and Dynax 5 bodies have nothing, not even a foam strip. Now that flip-up bit provides better light sealing around the focusing screen, but it is added mechanical complexity. And the baffle does make a difference during long exposures and exposures in full sun, especially if the sun is behind you. So if you're a serious Minolta fan looking for a 5, go for the Alpha Suite 2 instead. It's worth the added time to find one and the added shipping cost to import it from Japan just to have this light baffle because, yes, it does make a difference in the quality of your images. But enough on specs and stuff and features. How is this thing to use? It's a joy. It's a bit clinical, which is to say it's more Nissan than Alfa Romeo. It lacks that heart and soul that photographers will sometimes say a camera needs. But here's a secret. Heart and soul, that's photographer code for tetchy or poorly designed. The five, it's like a close friend who's socially awkward. You know you can rely on them when you need to, but you probably don't want to have them interact with you in strange circumstances. In this case, strange circumstances, that's my code for batteries that aren't right off the damn production line. 
The 5 is fun and it's light, and it's easy to forget that it's around your neck if you have a small lens like the 50mm 1.7 on it. With a fast 50 prime, the 5 is a fantastic shooting experience. It's just an all-around enjoyable camera that, as long as you have good batteries, won't let you down. And also, the 5 is a great way to get access to Sony Alpha lenses. In addition to a large array of great Minolta lenses, these will take the modern Sony full-frame Alpha lenses, and it's pretty hard to beat that. So what it boils down to is this. If you want an enjoyable camera that's reliable, really well laid out, and easy to use, you can do a whole lot worse than the 5. For the prices that the 5 sells for, it would be very hard to do any better.